This week, we'll be going over our Outlast 2 Insane Mode speedrun for the Saint and Messiah achievements, plus with Prophet and Asahel being some bonuses that we end up getting. Of course, Saint is for doing it in Insane Mode, Messiah is for doing it in Insane Mode without reloading the battery, Prophet is for completing the game without hiding in a barrel or a closet, and then Asahel is for completing the game in under four hours. So we'll do all of this in a one run, and um, yeah, we'll see how many tries it takes. So yes, we will go to insane mode and start this up. Blah blah blah, continue. So one of the things, there's a lot of cutscenes. So this beginning part, we've got a cutscene here. I'm gonna have this timer up in the top right, and when there are cutscenes, I'm gonna fast forward through it. You'll see a little notification on the top left when I do that, but the timer in the top right is going to speed up along with the video. So, you'll still be able to see exactly how long it's taking me through these sections. So when you're using this guide, the best way is going to be, basically you watch part of the guide, then come over and do it on yours, pause your game, go back to the guide, watch the next section, and just keep on repeating that. That way you can kind of get a feel for each section, and then go through it and do it on your own. Of course, I'd recommend doing it on nightmare mode to kind of get some practice runs in first. That's going to be the easiest way to make sure that you've got the difficult sections down. And I'll probably kind of point out, hey, this section, you're going to want to practice. Just to make sure that you get those more difficult areas down and you don't get 45 minutes or even further. And then just end up dying to something stupid and ruin that run. But eventually you will wake up here at the plane crash, or not plane crash, but helicopter crash. It'll take a second until you can actually do anything. But right here we're going to have to lift the door up off of us. So we'll do that. And we'll get up, grab the camera. And at this point, we can run over to the left and start jumping down and go across the little cliff area over here. Just keep on going down, jump across the gap, all the way down because we're trying to get to the helicopter. Have to shimmy our way across this. If you do sprint, you might just run off the edge whenever you get to that point, so... Definitely kind of walk and go. I mean, it's not a huge deal if you die right there, but still, don't want to do that. Over here on the left side of the helicopter, we've got a bandage. Make sure you pick that up, just in case you need it. And then we're going to run around the right side and over to the burning body that's up here. We're going to go past him. And then in this cliff area, just look up into the sky to see where the light is. That's how you can navigate your way through this, that way you don't have to use any night vision, because we have to do this without reloading the battery at all. So, yeah, you don't want to do that. With the camera, it's only going to be using your battery if you turn on night vision. So that's that's kind of the only point that, uh, that does that. We also, about halfway through, you actually get your camera taken, and your battery gets back up to 75%, so it's not a huge deal if you use it during the beginning section, but still. Now it's all pretty straightforward, but as you get around this little corner up here, we're going to see a guy. So right here, you're going to want to stop about right here and let him walk away before you keep running. That's because if you run too far ahead and too fast, then he's just going to end up hitting you, and you don't want that to happen. But you'll jump through that window, go through this door, and then we'll go over to the left through this hole and run through these arches. And you'll do these little slide things periodically to try to save a little bit of stamina. That's going to be a huge thing in this run. I'll try to point that out whenever we need to save stamina or do something like that where it matters. But you'll just come down here into this little basement area with our ritual stuff. Go in here, turn right. You'll go through here and go right again. In this dark area, you just keep going straight until you get out, go around this little horse, and right up here, 
Don't get stuck on things like I did, but go up here and slide under this. Now up here we're going to have the first part where we actually are in a little bit of danger and we're going to need to kind of stop up here for a second. And there's a thing where you can kind of stop, walk a little bit, stop again to regain stamina. You're going to want stamina right here before she comes around so that you can run all the way around here. All the way around back. And then back to where she was just at. And we're just going to run past that little area. Crawl under here. And at that point you're safe. But we'll hop over these, pull this out slightly, jump up on it jump onto the little thing up here and then we just crawl around and eventually we're gonna drop down so then we get down here we're gonna pick up our glasses and then you could look at her, but since we're trying to go pretty quick, we are straight up just going to turn around and get Jesus. going. So then you will jump through this window, right over here, and jump through this window. Okay. Now in here, make sure that you do not run. Just crouch down and walk up to the window. Get up to the window and count to one, two, three. I waited slightly longer. And then you can climb out and just normal walk around this right side and once you get up to this house you're gonna listen for when the door opens that's when you need to start running and then you just run right around here and then we get the flash of light and we are safe again so then we just keep on going up we'll come down here and I I try to do the little slides to try to kind of keep my sprint going. Uh, I, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It I was not able to do it crazy consistently, so I kind of opt out of doing that in the really dangerous parts. But um, if you if you get it down, feel free to do that. So we'll run through here. We're running all the way down to the little prison area where we have to grab the key and then we go through here we have a little jump scare guy and then we can go ahead and unlock that door and get moving on out and then at this point you're going to just kind of run through the building and up to the second floor and we'll end up jumping out a window in a second over to Lynn, where we have kind of a jumbled up mess of cutscene type things, but you also have to hold W for most of it. Oh God, Blake! Are you okay? No. What the fuck? I don't know. Oh shit! We have to run. So right here, you're just moving. And then at this point, you can hold W and sprint to kind of move a little bit quicker. Uh, this is the only little section right here when you're with Lynn that you can actually go a little bit faster by sprinting, but every second counts. The uh, I think the time that this ended up being is like 2.25 or something, so 2 hours, 25 minutes. So, you know, you've still got an hour and a half of time to play around with that you can kind of take your time with or mess some stuff up as long as you don't die so you're not really too tight on time on this but you know and then coming up in a second Your guy's gonna, like, bring his camera up. As soon as he does that, just turn off night vision, put it away. Because we do not want to be using a lot of battery. Because whenever you've got your night vision on, that's when you're gonna be draining your battery, which we cannot reload. So right here, I go ahead and put that away. Then I'll whip it back out to turn it off, because, uh, yeah. 
but you don't want to have night vision on unless you need it, because that's when your battery is going to be draining. And since we're sitting here trying to keep one battery for the entire game, you want to you wanna try not to use it unless you absolutely need to. So these little areas, it's so lit, you do not need it. Not that running from the cult is lit, kind of not lit, but you know. And then right up here we're going to have another little cutscene, which I will fast forward through because we don't need to sit through that. This one's honestly... I think this is one of the longer ones. This whole, uh, the beginning area has a lot of both safe areas and these like cutscenes that take a lot of time. Which is unfortunate because that's when it's still easy. And so if you're doing multiple runs, you end up spending like an hour a at a time whenever you get to the parts where you end up having a little bit of tough spots and might die. Once you can get back up though, we're just gonna kind of sprint forward and we're gonna try to kind of hang on the left side because as we get up here this house right here we're gonna jump into the window of and so right here on this shelf there's usually a bandage but there wasn't this time so we just jump out the window and run across this little bridge jump over here to this part of the wood and go in the door and then right here you're gonna go back to the school look where the door is and just run over to it while it's still light and then you can run over to the left Pick up this picture to spawn the door in and go through the door over here. And then you're just going to turn right and run straight down the hall. Now right here, you can kind of get in the little cubby on the side of the wall to not be pushed back as far. And then just run through the second to the right of the doors and just go straight from there. That basically lines you up right where you need to be for this little gate that automatically opens. And then you'll just fall right down here and into the loving arms of our friend Ethan. And then we're going to have another pretty long... It's not necessarily cutscene because you got a whole W, but basically a long, long cutscene part. Now, I don't remember if I did it right here, but as he pulls you up and you get up, you can try to, like, maneuver your way in front of him to kind of get it to where you can keep up a little bit better. Oh, you know what? Maybe I do do it. So, yeah, you can get in front of him. It doesn't really save you any time, but, um, I don't know. It at least makes this part a little bit more interesting because you're trying to stay in front of him to keep him pushing you forward. But uh, I, I think it just kind of slows him down and doesn't actually speed you up. But he also doesn't stop and turn around to talk to you whenever you do this. So who knows? Maybe it's better. Maybe it's not. If, if it is better, it's by like maybe a second. So not really a big deal if you don't do it. But I always did just to try to keep myself from going crazy. Doing so many Outlast 2 insane runs. So then we'll get up to his porch and we'll talk to him a little bit more. I gave a chance to run. Spun them in some stories. I've been gifted with talk my whole life. You probably noticed. Jane Doe. I definitely did notice. She was eight months pregnant. Blonde hair, cut like a boy's. Yeah. He was definitely gifted with talk. You seen her? It's why we came here. Is she all right? Mister, just tell me she's okay. She's fine. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. And God bless you. Okay, and then we can finally go inside. And our friend Ethan's gonna have us 
climb down here and hide from the uh, the crazy cult because he's cool like that. So just walk up to this until it lets you in, then you can climb down. Now there's always a second bandage or third bandage right here, so I'll pick that up since my second one didn't spawn. But most of the time you're gonna have that second one in that house by the uh, by the water, so you usually won't need this one, but. If it doesn't spawn for you, you can get your second bandage here. And of course, you've only got two bandages that you can actually carry when you're doing insane, so that is going to be our max right now until we have to use one. Then of course we lay here, have a little nightmare. I probably could have fast forwarded through this part too, but... Oh well. So then we get up. And we've got a visitor. There's Martha. So Martha's up there and she's questioning Ethan. And we just have to watch as she, uh, you know, does her thing. He's not a heretic. Leave him alone. So yeah, this is like... I don't know, th this part doesn't take too long. It is a, uh, it is a little bit of a drink break. If you are needing a drink, you can take a, take a drink or two. Maybe eat a little snack while you're waiting. But while this is going on, this board up here is the one that we're going to climb out of, so... I always come right up to it and just stare at it, and then once it breaks, as soon as it gives you the option that you can get out, just go ahead and hit it. Martha won't actually be out of the building yet, so it's a little, it's a little spooky to just uh, do that, but uh, you can't die, so just go ahead and do it and you're fine. So, right here, she's going to stab him the last time. And there's the board. And then you just kind of wait a second until it pops up the option and you climb out. Which, we should be caught by making all this noise and doing all this, but somehow we're not. So you jump out there and run out the front door. And we're going to sprint around to the right side kind of going along the cliff here, all the way down to the water. And then as you're getting over here to the water, we're going to stop for a second and let our stamina catch up because if you go into the water for too long, your stamina is going to run out and you'll drown. And that's going to be a really stupid way to die on an insane run, so we're not going to do that. But then once you get up here, we can get back to sprinting and we'll go over the bridge and up to the fire and nothing over here is going to kill us, but I'll do a little slide there. But once we get up here, we're going to stop a little bit again to catch our breath because we're going to have to sprint a lot coming up. So then you'll sprint all the way down through here, turn to the left and slide under here and just keep on sprinting all through the cornfield. Don't go through the corn because that'll slow you down a little bit too much. You'll just go around here to the right. Keep your distance from this guy and jump over here. If you get too close, he will hit you, but as long as you stay a little bit away from him, he'll miss. Or he just won't see you, like, right there. Then we'll run all the way down here and open up this door. This could be a little bit of a tricky spot, but this strategy is pretty consistent. You just come over here to the right and crouch down underneath this little wagon. And we're just going to sit here for a while. So there's another strategy where you go over to the left and hide behind a barrel and wait for them to open up a window that you can climb through. But they don't always go that way, so this is much more consistent. And you can actually do this every run. So you see the guy straight ahead that is just sitting in the shadows. This guy walks on by with a flashlight. 
The guy further away is going to go over to the right and either open up the window or he's going to come back around this way. So for this run, you hear him talking and he comes back. He did not go through the window, so it's a good thing we went this route. They're both going to go through that open door that you went through. As soon as they do that, you can crouch, walk over here, don't step in the glass, or that is going to alert them. And we just kind of crouch, walk our way over here. You can probably, yeah, I was going to say you could probably stand up right there, but I just waited a little bit longer. And then you just bring this over to the ladder and jump on up. And at this point, we're just coming over here to go pull that chain. So you do that to open up this little door so we can go over that plank. And then we'll walk along this and one of these guys are going to come up here and smack us with this dead thing. We'll fall down here. And then we can get to running in a second. So once it lets you run, then you're going to run. You're not in any danger, but we're just moving to get the time. We're going to go all the way up here. And we'll have another flash of white light. With all the birds dead. Then you'll just come down here to the right. And we're going to sprint right up here and up on the cliffs. Then you have to shimmy your way around and jump around over to the cave. And you probably already know the route to get over there, but... Yeah, you just shimmy over here, climb up on this, jump across, climb up here. And over to this cave. Now, in the cave, you basically just go straight... And keep going straight until you get to this, then you crouch, and then you turn a little bit to the left, and then keep going to the other little cloud of white dots. That's going to be the easiest way to do it without using any night vision. You can also go straight until you stop hearing yourself move, and then crouch and go through it that way. And then right there, I like to go to that back corner and then sprint and jump, because the first couple of times that I was trying to do this, my dude did not grab on, so you have to make sure that you are sprinting enough and you go kind of over to the right. Now through here, I flashed my night vision a little bit because I always got stuck in that. But it basically, you just go back and forth until you get out here. And then once we get back out here, we're going to have to shimmy down this way again. And once you get above this, just jump down. Jump down here, and then we're going to slide down right over here to the entrance of this little building. And there's going to be a guy up here. Don't worry about him. You'll just crawl under the stairs and over here. The guy that's looking above you, he can't do anything, so it doesn't matter. We'll come around here to the door. And go up these stairs. Once you get to the top, turn around and just kind of shimmy over to the left. And you'll be able to come back, straight back here. Then do the same thing to come up these stairs. And then we can move this bookshelf out of the way. Then at this point, we have what could be a little bit of a hard run, but there's a really easy strategy that I'm going to show you later on in this that'll get you through this area super easy. Once you get up to this lady, just go to the right and kind of slowly stop and walk. That way you get stamina because we have to run from here all the way up here without running out of stamina. So you'll run up here, over to the right, all the way back here and we're going to crouch down and just hide right back here just kind of get far enough back to where there's some grass in front of you 
and that'll be far enough. You don't really have to be behind the barrel, but just back here in the grass. So then we'll have Freddy Krueger's cousin come out here and walk straight out as soon as he kind of gets past the light. Then you can come up here and go up the stairs all the way. And we're going to go up to the little generator room that is right here. And of course, we'll pull the generator, get that turned back on so we can run over to the elevator. And this lady will be standing here. Do not walk out there or she will hit you. So then we're just going to slowly walk behind her and follow her. If you get too close, she will hit you, so kind of keep a little bit of a distance. Then once she kind of puts her hands up, then you can go past. And we're going to basically run all the way back down up until we get to kind of around this little fence area. And then start doing the walk stop thing to get your stamina back. And as soon as Martha shows up right here, we're going to run straight back and then hang out right back here at the fence. Now, depending on which way she runs, so you saw she just showed up on the left side, you're going to run over to the right and down here and straight back. Now, depending on where you stand, she'll go the other way. Just kind of watch out at the end of that fence area and then run the opposite way that she goes. That way you can use the fence to kind of keep her at a little bit of a distance and it's super, super consistent, super easy to get through that part. Then we just run right over here and over to the well, and we'll go back over to the school. And in here, you basically just crawl straight forward up to the little fan here, and then turn right. And you go back until you hear Jessica talk, then you turn left. So about right here. And then you'll kind of see a little bit of a light there. She'll start screaming. When she starts screaming, you turn to the left again, and you can actually see light at the end of that one, so it makes it a little bit easier to hit. Then we'll crawl out of here and go through this door. We're going to run all the way down to the left, and you're going to hear a locker open. As soon as that happens, just open up this little thing, start cranking that. Then we can turn to the right and run all the way down. Make sure you put away your camera whenever he whips out the uh, night vision because we do not need it here. Then you run back down to where the locker was and you'll see Jessica run through this open door. Just gotta follow her out and all the way down here to where she's hanging. And then you can go in this door. So right here we're gonna have this guy. It's a little bit of a tiny cutscene but it's only a couple of seconds long, so not too bad. And then as soon as we get up, we're going to get to running, because he's going to be chasing us. Go through this door. Over to the left a little bit, over this table. And then around to the right. Through another door. Then you have to go to the left and kind of go around the little maze of tables, and then crouch here, and you're just going to basically hold W at this point and then maybe kind of steer your camera around but down here your character is just going to be going wherever the game tells you so if you just hold W that's all you have to do under these little crawl spaces down here then up here it even auto crouches for you so you can get a little speed back and then it'll auto prone again so you don't have to worry about hitting any of those buttons, just hold W through that whole section. And then we're going to sprint up to this open door and to the left to get through this little squeeze gap that falls and blocks them. But then we are not done, so we're going to keep running, go all the way around here, and prone to get under this bed to hide. And then this guy's going to come in 
as soon as he gets past this little red box up here, that's when you're going to crawl out, stay crawling, and then crawl all the way back here. About right here, you can stand up, and then we're going to jump over this edge of the staircase to get down here, and then crawl under this bed, and wait for the guy to open this door. Once he starts going up the stairs, then we can get out and just close this door, hit the lock, and then we can open this door by sliding this bookshelf. They're going to be coming through. They, I, I didn't push it far enough. They walk, so you're not really in that much danger, but go ahead and get that open and run through the tunnel. You might have to use your night vision to kind of get through this. I had it up for way too long, but... This first half of the game, you end up getting it kind of replenished automatically, so it's not a huge deal, but you'll push this out of the way too, so you can go through another little tunnel. Again, I didn't push this one far enough. It's like three pushes to get through. You probably this? don't need uh, night vision there either, but... Shit. Oh well. This first half isn't too big of a deal if you kind of use it a little bit too much, but... It's, uh... I, I'll, I'll kind of point out the, the spot in the game where you really need to be careful about how much you use your night vision. This first half isn't really that big of a deal. So then we'll run up the stairs, take a right to go up these stairs, and kind of get in front of this door over here. And you can see the door on the video, hopefully. I'll try to Maybe brighten it up a little extra so you can see it, but as soon as you open that, it's going to start a chase. You just go around those tables, up the stairs, around here, and kind of slide through this. You can kind of stand here and catch your breath because you're not in danger at this point, but just kind of watch out before you jump. And then you're going to sprint, jump over this, go to the left. And then we're going to jump down here and crawl again. For another crawling section, which, again, just hold W, and you will automatically go through the path down here. And at this point, we just sprint all the way up here, climb through this little window, and start beating the floor to get down here. And at this point, you're going to stand up. Just make sure you start hitting the uh, prone button so you can get back down and then crawl through. And then we're basically good to go. We just run all the way around here and climb through this little window. And boom. Now we can keep on going through this door. Over to the right. And you kind of wrap around going through the right. Furthest right side that you can. Up some stairs and through a door. And then you go around the classroom here. Through another door. And up some stairs. Now at this point, if you are not currently hurt, then you can go through this window. And then you'll need to bandage down here. Now, if you're already hurt and you have blood on your screen before you jump out, make sure you bandage first, because if you jump when you're already hurt, you're going to die. But no matter what, you always have to heal around that spot, whether it's before or after or both. Now, we just push this wagon up to her. She's going to ask us to pray, pray with her, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to jump over here, and uh, she just automatically despawns, so that's fine. Then we run all the way back here to this little building where we can get another bandage. Now, this point up here is a little tricky. So, right here at the wagon, I kind of stop for a second to catch some breath, but of course, whenever you start pushing it, you'll replenish your sprint there. You just keep on pushing. She'll come out. You just run right into her. As soon as you stop, you're going to come back here and slide through the hole. And then sit right here away from the hole so that she'll walk across. Give her a second and then you'll come out 
run over, start pushing. As soon as she breaks through, then you're going to do the same thing, run and slide through the hole. I took my sweet time right there, and just get away from the hole and wait for her to walk along this side. There you go. Then you can go push it again. Now we're waiting for her to scream again. So right there, you're going to get off, run back through the hole again, and then wait right here. You can kind of crouch down and get at the hole to uh, wait for her. She went real slow on that one for some reason, but as soon as she walks around, then we can go through. Usually at this point, you can just push it and just kind of power through. So yeah, at this point, if she screams, you just keep on going, jump up here, and jump. Because as soon as you grab onto this, you are good to go. So that part can be a little tricky, definitely one that you're going to want to practice a few times and kind of make sure you've got that down. And then at this point, we can run all the way up here to this church. And this is going to be another pretty long sort of cutscene. So this is going to be one of the main kind of bathroom break spots where you could literally leave, go to the bathroom real quick, and come back and it will still be going through the cutscene. So you'll run up to this guy, get him to start talking, and then just sit in here and wait. My name's the Technically, you can run around, jump around, whatever you want to do in here, and they will not know that you're here, but uh, yeah, we just have to sit in here and watch as they torture and question this guy, so this is kind of the prime time that you would want to go to the bathroom, get food, get a drink, whatever you need to do. Because this takes a very long time. Then as soon as they start leaving, you can kind of get ready to run. Once Blake starts talking about running through the mines, that's when you're going to be able to exit and start sprinting out the front door so right there started talking that's our cue that we're good to go so we will run through the front door all the way down here still not in any danger so nothing too crazy going on we're just running through the town and then over here to the left and we will pull this door open run around here and go through this little squeeze gap in the shelves, go through another door, and up these stairs. And then I like to hold my, uh, I like to sit here and let my stamina replenish a little bit before jumping, just to make sure I don't fall and ruin that run. And then you jump over here, go through this little hole in the fence, and we've got a house that we go through with some uh, interesting actions. Go through this door. And as soon as you go through this window, you're going to kind of look in the distance at that big water wheel. And then just run straight towards that. Just don't even, don't even mind the people hunting you down with the flashlights. Even if you get close, see that guy right there? He's not going to do anything. You just run straight over there through the cornfield, and you'll be fine. And then once you get out, you can kind of do the whole stop and walk to get your stamina back so that you can run up to the door. Then up here, we will close the door and lock it. Go over here, and to the left to go grab our Frank that we're going to need for outside. Then we'll run straight back out here. Go up the stairs and we're going to crank to stop the water. So we'll do this real quick. And 
and then you will go back down the stairs. You can jump over that or do what I did. Either way is fine. And then go ahead and crawl through here. As long as you do it pretty quickly, you'll be fine. They automatically catch up to you right there, but at, at that point you're just running around to the left and off this little ledge to slide down here. And then they're not going to chase you, so at this point you're kind of safe, but we do have Martha again right here. This is our last area with Martha, at least for a while. So you're going to walk up here until she pops out. Make sure you have stamina before you do this. As soon as she comes out, you're going to run all the way back here and go through this door. And basically, you just run to this back spot and come back here to where he starts talking. And then you're good to go. So then we can go back to where she came out of. And she's despawned at this point. You go all the way around the right. Back to where she came from. Take another right through here. And we will squeeze through this little gap with all the blood. And then take a left. And we will run all the way down to a little slaughterhouse area. Jesus. You go around the left side so we can grab our hook that we're going to need to escape. So you'll have to pull a chain, grab the hook, all that good stuff. And then Martha is going to catch up to you right after this. So you'll start hearing her and she's going to slam the doors that we just came through. She'll start talking, but we still aren't really in any danger yet. You're going to squeeze through this little gap and then go back the way that we came. You're going to run straight out here and then keep on going. And we'll take a right up here to squeeze through this gap again. And basically just go back out to where we came from. Now, once you get out here to this little wagon area, you're going to stop and get all of your stamina back. So it's just kind of sit here until he stops breathing heavily. And then we're going to sprint. So she's going to start busting through this door. You just keep on running past her. Go through this little little squeeze area. I kind of ran past it for a second there. You're going to come all the way back here. Put the hook on the little door here. Come back to the chain and lift it up. It takes two pulls to get it up. And then you just crawl through. She'll so grab you, but it's fine. Just a little cutscene. And then we are good to leave there. Do okay. so run all the way up here. Take another right. We'll go up these little stairs and jump up here to climb through this little area and we will find ourselves back in the school go to the left run all the way down here this is before I found as long as your stamina lets you and go through this door and then we're gonna grab this little transparent paper thing we'll take that go back the way we came take it right there and we'll go through the opposite double doors right down here And run all the way down this hall. Until you get to this slightly open door. And in here we're going to put the slide on the projector. And then kind of push it over to where the hangman is. Over here. So you'll pull it all the way to the left. And then straight down here. He'll automatically stop. And then you can go ahead and get going back the way we came again and this time we take a right through these new doors and we can run all the way down this hallway basically you just run all the way down to the red light to the door and then sprint back to the other door and we're just going to keep doing that over and over going back and forth down this hallway So this kind of takes a little bit. Eventually, the 
screen's going to start kind of turning blue. But it's not doing it just yet. Got to go all the way down the hallway again. I think about right here is when it starts turning blue. Blue is when it's about to be over. So right here, that's your cue that you can try to trigger a jump scare that will just end the sequence and get a little bit of extra time knocked off. It's usually around these stairs down here. It's hard to see in the dark, but you can get a jump scare to trigger and then that, that kind of speeds it up a little bit. But otherwise, you just run back down to the end of the hallway over by the white light, which is what I do now. And then eventually, you hear that noise and that's your cue to go through this door. Pull this little thing over. Right up here to this little cabinet and then you can jump up and into the ceiling. Then at this point you're going to crawl just straight forward for a little bit and eventually you have a, uh, a tongue come wrap around your leg and try to pull you in. Got to turn that night vision off quicker than I did. I kind of waited way too long there, but, you know, whatever. And then you're going to crawl out and keep on going. And slide down here. We're going to shimmy our way over to the right along the cliff. And we're going to try to get across this old minecart bridge. And so, we'll get up here, and of course, you're going to want to take your time, kind of line yourself up on here, make sure you be careful not to fall off, because, uh, well, if you fall off before the game forces you to, you kind of die, and that's going to end your run, you do not want it to be from something stupid like this, so definitely keep, make sure that you're careful on this. And of course, right here, we've got our locust slash dragonfly plague that's gonna happen it's gonna knock us off of here we're gonna fall down into the woods where we get to deal with the uh, syphilis squad a little village of diseased people that are down here the scald we do have a little bit of a cutscene kind of that we've got to sit through here. It's not too long. Probably could have sped it up a little bit, but oh well. We get our first look at Nick and Laird walking by in a second. And up to this point, the only real tough part was the part with Martha where you have to run back and forth through the little hole in the wall and wait for her to go away and keep pushing the cart. That's really the big tough part so far. We have another pretty tough part coming up. Uh, really, there's a couple of them, but one of them, there's a, a really consistent, easy strategy. Really, everything with this, this next section, as long as you do it exactly like I say to do it, you shouldn't have any issues. Once I kind of got it down... I had I had no issues whatsoever any of the runs that I did. But yeah, we'll just run straight forward. You don't need night vision. It's super bright. Of course, if you use it, it's not too big of a deal. We're about to get to the point uh, that's sort of halfway where we do lose our camera and then get the battery refilled anyway. To so go through here, kind of go straight into the right in this dark area. And then it gets lit back up. We've got this guy crawling around as a diseased boy does. We'll go through this little log. So far, still no danger here. We're just wandering around through the woods. And then you'll run all the way down here. Take a left, but don't sprint because you don't want to go down and break some legs. So you gotta carefully drop down. And then this is another little cliff area where you would look up at the light and use that to navigate so you don't have to use any of your night vision. 
Now down here, you're going to want to avoid all the people that you can. Because if you get too close, some of them will attack you. This guy's just going to jump out and be gross. So after that, you're going to go over to the right, kind of hug the wall. Go past this little campfire, but stay to the right to go by this tree. Because that guy that just ran past, you do not want to get in his way. He will kill you if he hits you, so just really make sure you avoid him. Avoid all the people that are laying here, because they'll also try to attack you. And just run up here, and jump up on this. And then, can't jump there, so we're going to shimmy. Get on the other side of this. And then jump up here. You could jump up again after this, or you can do what I do, and just jump down right here. This is a little bit quicker, so this is the way we do it. And right here, my sound cuts out, but oh well. It's not like I'm going to quit a an insanity run halfway in. So you run straight ahead. We're going to see Nick and Laird right there. You just run to the left of them and keep on running. They will hit you once, but that's fine. Just keep staying to the left. We'll run past the campfire and through this little squeeze gap right here. And then once you're in the locker, then you can heal up. Because at this point, we're safe for now. Then in a second, it'll let us exit. We can run over to the right and follow Jessica, wherever she's going. We'll go down the hallway and down the hallway into this room. We just hit the computer real quick and then leave it. Then we're going to take a left, take another left. And this door right here, we don't need to go in here yet, but we're going to open it up. And then come over here. Go all the way down the hallway through this door that opens. Take a right. And then take a left down here. And jump up into the ceiling. That door we opened is going to help us out quite a bit later on. Um, you'll see next time we go to school. or It's either in a, a time or two when we go to the school. But right here, we're going to climb out of this log and right into the hands of the Scald and Nick and Laird. So this is another super long cutscene. This is another one where if you need to get food, a drink, go to the bathroom, something, this is, this is prime time to do it. I think, I think this one is the longest cutscene that we've got because we have this whole thing and then... We'll get knocked out. Or no, we don't get knocked out. We uh, slowly, eventually get nailed to the cross. And then... Yeah, they take our camera. This is, this is the point at which they take the camera. And in a little bit, we'll get it back. And the battery will be set to 75%. No matter if you used it or not. So then we'll wake back up. We'll have to get ourselves off of this. Once we get down here and get control again, we're going to start going forward and over to the left. So there we go. So we'll start moving over here. And of course we're bleeding, but we don't have any bandages, so we got to go find one. So wobble over here. Once you see that guy walking out, go ahead and crouch down and go through the grass. I never had anyone attack me through this area, but just in case, don't want to end your insane run this late into it. And then you just want to kind of crouch down, avoid touching anybody or getting too close to anybody. Get up here to this bandage, and then we're going to go ahead and keep on walking. Go over this way. And we will crawl down through this log to avoid this lady that's above us. And then on the other side of the log, we're going to kind of stay over here. And this is where we're going to be able to heal. So it won't actually let you proceed up the uh, little cliff up here where you have to jump up if you don't heal. So no matter what, you kind of have to before you do this, but go ahead and heal. And then after these bandages kind of get gross immediately, 
then we can go ahead and run over here to start climbing up. So you'll jump up here, and then we will get to running. You'll have to jump over this log. They'll find out that you have left your post. You'll jump down here, and then right up here, we're going to kind of stay over to the left, and this guy's going to come out of a house. Don't worry, he's kind of blind, so he doesn't see you yet, but we do want him to see us. So as soon as he sees you, kind of wrap around and like give it a second so that he'll chase you. Then you can go back to where he came from and over to the right, go down here, and then up on this little cliff. Then we will maybe kind of catch our breath for a second. I didn't really, but it, you're not in too much danger at this point, so it's whatever. So you'll go down and keep on running. Then over to the right, once we get to this little fallen down tree, you'll run across that. Jump over this log. And then catch your breath again. Jump down here. And then kind of try to get as far up as you can on this right side until he starts walking up and then just crouch down to the water and you're just going to want to sit here for a while. He'll keep moving the light back and forth and I would just, I would just chill. Eventually you're going to see some bubbles start coming up whenever you're starting to run out of uh, holding your breath, but if you pop up, just do it for a second and go back down when he's not flashing the light at you. And as soon as he completely turns it off, you can stand up and just kind of wait there. I wouldn't move forward until he gets about right there, where he kind of walks off to the side and out of the way. Then you can go and walk up. At this point, you can sprint into the building. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and grab the camera, and boom. Now we've got our battery set back to 75%. And we're back in the school, so we're going to go over to the right. And then take a left. And take a ride. And we're going to kind of chill for a second. You're going to come down this hallway. And be ready because the monster is going to spawn right here. You're going to turn around, run down the hallway, and into the bathroom on your right. And then he runs down to the left. So as soon as the sort of music and stuff stops, then you can go ahead and come back out. Go down to the left and we're going to go answer that phone. And then we'll sit through this little phone thing that goes on here. And then right after this, we're going to be able to go out of the room there's going to be a chase that happens, so as soon as you open the door, you're going to run to the left, go all the way down the hall, run to the left again, run to the left again, and then the locker that she just went into, we're going to go into that. That does not break the locker barrel achievement, so that is completely fine. We're going to kind of catch our breath, then we're going to get out of here. This is going to be another chase. So you're going to open the door, he's going to shoot, run all the way to this wall, grab the bandage, then jump through the window. If you don't go all the way to the wall, then he will hit you with that arrow. We don't want to get hit. Kind of run over to the left, go to the left of this house, catch your breath for a second. Keep on running, we're kind of hugging the right side. We're going to jump through this window, lock the first door. Go over here, lock the second door, and then crouch down and get next to this window. You don't want to be standing at the window or standing too far back, because whenever he comes up, if he can see you, he will shoot you. So you want to stay out of vision. He broke down the door really quickly on that one. You're just kind of waiting for him to break the door down. Then you jump through the window, go over to the right, and we're going to come right here to this little shimmy spot. And... It, sometimes he won't see you at all. If he does see you, he'll try to shoot you, but I, I don't think the game will let you die once you get to the little ledge spot, so you should be good if you make it to that point. And we're going to jump down and go across this little 
tree here. This is a part that could be hard, but the little strategy that I'll show you here makes it super simple to get through. You're going to run to this rock and then just crawl, and you're going to crawl all the way through here, down to the right, and then crawl up here to this big rock, and then you're going to sprint from there, and as soon as you get past those cactuses, jump down to crawl, and then you can get back up once you crawl forward, you'll run through this part, climb up here, you make sure you kind of catch your breath for a second, and then you're going to sprint and kind of hug the right side, but do not touch any cactuses, because, uh, like that one, it'll hurt you. Try not to do that, but as long as you're just sprinting, you won't get hit at that spot. You can grab that bandage, jump down here, and this guy's going to grab you. Just do the little mouse wiggle thing to, uh, get through this. And then start sprinting, because he's going to chase you. You don't want to get caught by him. And right here, we're going to slide down, and that's the end of that. We're going to get caught in the fence, and Nick and Laird will be right here. We've got a cutscene where we get buried alive, so we'll get through that. And once we get up and out of this little coffin they put us in, you'll turn around and go straight over here to where this fallen tree is, and just kind of go where it's pointing, and you'll just sprint down here. There's going to be a couple of guys crawling, um, or like running on all fours. Just uh, run around them so they don't catch you. Because they will hurt you if they, they catch you, but they're super easy to run around. And then you just sprint through here, jump over this, go all the way to this. We'll go up to the left, and up here. Once you climb up these, you're going to have to kind of wait a bit. Because you will not have any stamina at that point. And at this point, we're not in any danger, so you can kind of take your time, but... We're going to run all the way down here, slide down this little spot over to this cliff. And over here, I, you definitely want to have stamina for this, but you're going to jump and jump into this little window here. And again, wait at this door to have full stamina, because then we're going to jump over and we're going to sprint as hard as we can to chase this guy. Then right here, cut over to the left behind the house, go around it. You're going to go through these two trees behind the outhouse, around this little well, and wrap around this way up to the left. You need to time it like that and run that route, because otherwise that guy's going to keep chasing you up here, and it's going to make things a lot more complicated. As long as you have the timing down, you'll be completely free to do this part, where you break this branch, get the rope, Definitely be careful on your way down, just to make sure that you had the timing right and the guy's not sitting here about to chase you. But as long as you did it right, you can just come right down here, grab the rope, and as soon as we get this, we're going to go sprinting this way over to the right. Stay to the right of these houses. And then right here, we're going to cut back in over to the outhouse and through these trees up here. Kind of avoid this guy, he will be in different spots each time you do a run. Sometimes he won't be there at all. But uh, definitely try to avoid that guy because he will grab you if you get too close. And once you jump in here, you're good to go. So that is another one of the tough parts right there. But if you just practice it a few times and get that route down and the timing, then you should be able to do it consistently once you do your actual insanity run. Just make sure you practice it a few times on Nightmare. Then we will wake up with them dead, 
we'll go ahead and crawl through here. And now it's about time that we go to the rooftop section of the school. So you're going to run straight, take a right, kind of run along these pipes and take another right to follow those, go to the left, and then jump over this railing, keep on going straight. Then you'll turn to the left and kind of do a little U-turn and turn back to the right, go through this door and down the stairs. You'll have to go down here and open the door on your right. And then down here in the stairwell, you want to kind of wait a second to make sure you've got a little bit of stamina. Because once you get down here where the blood is, the demon guy is going to spawn again. You have to run back up and jump over this railing. And then jump down. And then run back downstairs and out the door again. So then down here, we're going to go over to the right and over to this hatch. And then go ahead and go down the hatch. You'll turn right around, go over here to the end of this. I kind of got stuck for a second, but you'll open a door and then turn, I believe it's to the right, and then run all the way down here and go up this ladder to get out. Once you get down there to where the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is, that's when he's going to spawn again, and you just have to run straight down there and get up the ladder. Up until that point, he's not actually going to get up to you. So, just once you get to that point where you're running down the, the tunnel with the light, that is when you need to sprint and get up that ladder. At this point, you'll just want to pull out your camera without night vision, turn on your microphone with uh, V on... PC and keep moving forward and kind of going in the direction where Jessica's talking. You'll be able to tell by the voice, the audio channels over on the left side. And just keep on doing that for a little while. This part takes a little bit. You just have to listen and do it. There's not really any trick to it other than that. And then eventually, once you finish, you're going to see her hanging. As soon as that goes away, just start kind of spinning around until you see this light, and then go to the light to get out the tunnel. Then you'll slide down here. You'll go up these little stairs and down these stairs and all that. And then once you get to the end, you just run straight, and then kind of go over to the right through the trees. And we'll run straight out here to the little lake area. There's nothing dangerous going on yet. Still just kind of running around. It's all safe over here. To go through this door, go through this house, jump through the window, and over to the left. We're going to go up the hill and kind of uh, run out of stamina here. So you're going to kind of stop a few times, keep on going. And we're getting up to, oof, this is, coming up is a really long part that just kind of sucks that you have to go through it all because it adds like, I think like 20 minutes to the run, either 15 or 20. Uh, make sure you have stamina right up here because you have a jump, you gotta, you gotta make sure you've got stamina to make this. Because if you do not make it, you will die and that would be, oh, that would suck to end your run right there. So then we're going to keep on going over to the left, slide under this tree, down to these houses, which these guys aren't going to do anything, so that's fine. You'll run all the way up here to the shore, get on the raft, and here is the lake. The good old raft section. I am going to fast forward through a lot of this because it takes so long and is so boring. So... You'll start paddling. It's basically just hold down, left click, and 
you just go until something happens. So it gets foggy. We'll have some dead fish pop up in a second. Oh, we have a tentacle first, and then dead fish. And then right up here, we'll have a wave come. It's going to knock you off the raft. At this point, you're going to have to go through this little cutscene. And in a second, we've got to swim back to the raft. I don't know if staying out in the water will kill you. But I didn't test it out, because uh, that would be a, a real dumb way to die. So you will swim over, get on the raft again, and then we will start paddling once again. You have to tap to get on, all that good stuff. So then we'll start swimming, paddling further on through the little lake. Then you have a long section of navigating through the rocks. Then right up here, we have another little section where we have to do something else, which is, is literally just, hey, keep tapping to dislodge yourself. We have our beginning of the Mud Men portion of the game, which this is the part that had me stressed out. Partially just because you, uh, whatever you're doing, multiple runs, once you get up here, it's like, oh man, I'm so far, I don't want to restart. We're already an hour and a half into this. That would really suck. So you'll keep on paddling through this area. It's super, super long. And then right up here, we're going to get knocked off again. And this time, we're going to lose the raft, but... Don't worry, we'll, we'll see it again in a few minutes. So you'll get up on the shore, and as soon as it lets us move, you go forward. And then kind of crouch under the tree there. We're going to run up around here to the right. We're going to have to shimmy our way on this ledge. We'll see another mud man running away from our raft down there. And once we get over here, we're going to run over to this tree and just push on it until it falls down so we can get over to the other side. And then you will run across here. And over on the right side, I don't think I don't think it spawned on this run. No. So over on the right side, there's a little sleeping bag where sometimes there will be a bandage. It just kind of spawns there if you need it, I think. But uh, on this run, it was not there, so I can't really show it. But that is another bandage spot if you need it. So then you grab the raft again, and we will get back to paddling. And this section will go for a while again. At this point, it starts breaking apart, but... We are still paddling. Okay, so right up here, it gets really slow right here, but after you get past this rock, we're going to get knocked off, and then you're going to want to basically just hold W. Do not sprint yet, but just hold W. And as soon as it starts letting you move, that's when you're going to hold shift so that you can start sprinting, or whatever buttons you need. Because if you're already trying to sprint before it lets you move, Sometimes the game will glitch out and not let you sprint, and that sucks. Down here, you're going to whip out your camera. As soon as you do, 180 spin around, line up with one of these lines, and then just keep flashing your camera. It takes about 15 or so seconds of running straight like this to get to the edge. I kind of got off track a little bit, but you just keep on running. Flash your camera so that you can see the edge once you get there. And then once you get to the edge, go ahead and climb up. Because you got the monster chasing you, and you do not want to die there. So then you'll run around to the left, go into the women's bathroom, and we're going to catch our breath right here because we're going to have another chase in a second. And 
And then once you catch your breath, you're going to open up this stall and then turn around, start running. And you're going to follow Jessica right around here, go through the men's restroom, out this door, and to the left. All the way up the stairs and to the right. You're going to kind of hang out here for a second to catch your breath. And then whenever you go out the door, you're going to go over to the right and basically just go down the hall, turn right again, go all the way to the door. You'll try to open it, but the dude will run out. Monster Man will push you back. You'll turn back around, run down the hall, take a left, go down this hall. Take a left again. Go all the way down this hall. And take a left again. This is where you have the blood rain section. Um, and this is where you can get the slip inside achievement for slipping for, I think it's like 12 meters down the blood. These are the halls that you want to do that on. Uh, the monster's coming, but I, I mean, I went super slow through that and did not have any issues. You'll just run down there, get up this ladder, and then it subtly changes into the real world where you will climb up and out of this little hatch. And then we are in the raining blood portion of the game. So you'll run up these stairs all the way through here. We are in no danger right now, so it's just kind of whatever. Just sprinting to sprint. You go down the little train track here. Still no danger at this point. You'll go through this little maze area, up these stairs and to the left through this door. As you get down here, I'd kind of wait a second to catch your breath before you go through the door. The dude's going to close it behind you, but you're still not in any danger at this point. Then you're going to open this door, run straight down through this little lit area, all the way through this door. Then you can jump over this, jump over this, then turn to the right, go through here, go up the left on the stairs. And then right here, we're just going to turn around, go over this beam. And then over here, you're going to run straight, but then turn to the right and kind of... It, basically, you're just zigzagging through this little maze area. And I just, I just would face these windows over here so you have something to kind of orient yourself on. And then once you get to this ending, then you have a door to go through. Run over here. We have a little cutscene with this guy. And once he gets off of you, you can get up and kind of follow him. Which, as soon as you go through this little squeeze gap, you're going to go back over to the school. And then right here, we're going to go straight and over to the right. Go kind of towards that light into the computer room. And where this chair flies out of, you're going to come over here, get on this computer, and talk to Jessica. She's going to be all creepy and say that she can see you. And tell you to turn around and look at her. And of course, you turn around. She's there hanging above her computer. And then you're just going to go over to her computer and start typing to her from over here. After a few messages, then you'll be able to move again. Well. Alright, in a second... There we go. Then you're going to turn to the right and run through this door. Then turn to the right again. Go to the left. And keep on running. I do a couple of little slides there to try to keep my stamina going. Then I fuck up that slide. Because, you know, that's what happens. Then you'll turn to the left again. You'll go through this door on the left with the little trash can holding it open. Run all the way down to Jessica. 
But then at this point, before you go in the door, we're just going to kind of hang out here. Chill for a second, let our stamina kind of replenish. And then... In a second, we go open the door, turn down, go down the stairs, and right down here, once you get a little ways into the hallway, then the monster's gonna come out, you're gonna run back up the stairs, and you're gonna go out the right door. And then I, right here, I turn to the right, but uh, this is not the way that you're supposed to go. So I run down here and say, oh, wait, that was the other time in the school. So then I run all the way back and go the way you're supposed to go to. Oh, not yet. I go the way that you're supposed to go to now, turn to the left and go out this way. So when you open the door, you go to the left, not, not what I just did. But also, if you do, it doesn't really matter. But as you're running down the hallway, the tongue will grab you, bring you down into the water, and you'll come back to the real world. Then at this point, you just have to get out of the water, climb up over this, go straight and take a right. This is going to be another section where it's not really that hard. The uh, strategy that I will show here is pretty consistent on getting it done. You just crawl through here. As soon as this mud man comes down, you're going to crawl back out. And then just walk right over here to this table. Crawl under it. And you're going to want to get behind this middle leg. And we're basically just going to be sitting here waiting for him to walk around until he eventually goes to the far back left from where we are. So you'll just kind of hang out here. You don't want to get too close to that right leg that's to our right, because whenever he walks over here, if you're too close to that, he's just going to reach down, grab you, and kill you. So, basically... Depending on how his pathing works, because it's, it's kind of random here, but... Eventually, he will go over there. You do have to wait a while. But see, right where he's going, right there. He, he went there quickly for me. You just crouch as soon as he goes to that back left corner. And then crouch walk over to this. Crawl under it. And as soon as you get to the other side, you can go ahead and start running up the stairs. You just kind of wrap around to the right and go straight through here. And then to the right, there's a little gap that you can squeeze through. Before you squeeze through here, catch your breath, and then squeeze through, because this part you will be chased in. You wrap around to the left, jump over this, run straight through here. You probably don't need your night vision at this point. Go up the stairs, take a right, jump over this table, keep on sprinting. Go around the right, run straight through here and up the stairs. And then you'll jump over these bodies and go up these stairs. And the important part is that you just kind of catch your breath before you squeeze through that gap down there. Because as long as you have full stamina, you'll be able to run through this. But um, if you don't, you will probably get caught. So then you'll push this out of the way, jump out the window, and boom, we're back at the school. <clears throat> So then you just shimmy your way over to the right to this open window that I'm looking at. And then you can go ahead and climb up and we'll take a right, go through this door. And then take a left and run down the hallway. Take a right. Take a left. We'll go all the way down here. Take another left. Then take a right. Then you're going to see this dude blocking the doorway. So you're going to go through the right door over here. Go through the room and out this door. Then turn to the left. And that door is going to just shut on its own, so then you just turn around, go back down the hallway. Once you get down to the end, that door is going to open again. And then at this point, uh, you don't really have to wait yet to get your stamina back, but you definitely want to get your stamina back before we come up here. Because this is another one of the sections that can be kind of difficult, but as long as you practice it a couple of times and get the layout down, and kind of the route that you have to run, 
that it won't be too bad. But this is the library. You may have heard of it if you've ever seen any of these videos or anyone talking about it. You walk up here, the monster guy is going to spawn, and then you want to run down the one that has the little bookshelf kind of blocking the path. You'll go straight down as far as you can go and then take a left, take a right. You'll kind of U-turn around and then run around this uh, bookshelf that's out in the open. Go around this table, you'll see him, then you turn back around. Start running down until you get to the point where there's the bookshelf that you can kind of circle around. You'll kind of wait for him to start running by. And then whichever way he goes, you, goes the, you go the opposite way. And then run back around that table and out here. So it's... It's really hard to see in the video because of how little you're able to use your night vision since you want to keep it for some of the later portions. So you definitely want to go practice that spot and just make sure that you kind of get a feel for it. Maybe run through it with night vision first and do it that way. So we'll go in that little room over there with the light, grab that bandage, then come down this way, kind of take a left out the room and come down here. Make sure you kind of catch your breath right here before you walk down here, because once we get to this last pillar, he's going to spawn again, and we will have to turn right back around and run away. Go down to where Jessica is and follow her to the left. Then go further to the left. You'll come up here and squeeze through this little hole right here. And that is how we go back to the real world. We have a couple of mud men fighting over us. We'll come down, fall down here. But then at this point, we're going to drag this over to this little wall. Kind of brace yourself and then jump over this. We're going to run straight down to the right and then take a left and crawl through this little gap. Then take a right, go right again, and then crawl through this squeeze gap on the left. Once you get through that, you will crouch down through this hole on your left again, run straight through here, and you're going to pull this, and you have to be really quick once you start pulling this. So you're going to pull it, kind of U-turn, grab this little cart, pull it straight back and over to the left, and then get it to kind of where this chain link fence area is, then jump over up here. If you take too long, they're going to jump out and start chasing you. But once you get past this point, they shouldn't be chasing you. I think if you take too long, they will be. But as long as you do it quickly, they won't even be chasing you at this point. So you run around all the way up here. Take a right. You'll go over these beams. There's a mud man th that we're kind of following really close to, but it doesn't matter. They're not going to come after us. Just keep on following that path that they took. And then right around here, we will be able to go up the stairs and out the side of the window where we fall down onto Jessica. Now at this point, he's going to start chasing us. This is another part that can be a little tricky. You're going to turn around and turn to the right and then run all the way down here. And make sure you are sprinting because he is following right behind you. I don't think I look behind me to see how far he is, but turn left, then go through the bathroom on the right. I shut the door and then run down to this little uh, stall right here, close the door immediately, and then crouch, or not crouch, prone down and crawl all the way down to where the door is. And then once you get in front of the door, you can just crawl out and he'll despawn. You just run out. You don't even get chased at this point, so it, it's... Pretty safe now, but up to the bathroom, you can easily get caught and end your whole run just from that spot. So then we're running all the way back, then up the stairs, through this little hallway, this little door, turn left down the hallway, then turn right, go through this double door, and turn right again. Turn right again through this door, and then you just run around these little fallen over desks and hop out the window. 
And at this point, we are back out in the real world. This is another tricky little spot up here. Well, not just yet. We have, we have one easy portion and then a tricky portion. Which I actually don't think it's that tricky. I think people, uh, I think people stress out about it more than you need to, but I'll explain it once we get there. So you'll jump across this. Very easy, simple shit. You're not in any danger right now. Run across around here to the left, push this out of the way. Then we're going to drop down here. Make sure you have stamina before you do this. We're going to drop down here. I guess you don't really need stamina. But as soon as you get down here, you're going to 180, turn around, put your camera away because you don't need night vision here. Run all the way up here to the right, then to the left. Then you're going to crawl all the way up here. You do actually have to kind of steer and tell your guy whether to crawl, crouch, whatever. Jump up here. And then, at least at this portion, you do automatically go into crawling mode when you're sprinting up to this straight part. And then once you get to that, just keep on going up and you'll be safe at this point. You'll close this. And we're at least safe temporarily. But then you're going to turn around to come over to the little elevator. You're going to hit this and immediately start heading towards that door. Now just hold W. Do not sprint yet. That's going to that's gonna crash through. As soon as you start walking normally, then you're going to start sprinting. And just keep on sprinting because they are right behind you. Jump over this. Slide under this. Jump over this and up the stairs. Now... Some people have said that uh, just sprinting all the way, you'll run out of salmon and get caught. You don't, actually. You just keep sprinting, slide under this. Then right here, you're going to jump and get on this platform. Don't run yet. You can, you can kind of chill for a second. They're coming up. As soon as they kind of start getting close to the edge, then you can start moving. I'm not even sprinting here. or I'm trying to sprint, but I don't have energy to. Once you jump down, then you'll have like a second wind and you'll be able to sprint. And then go ahead and get in here and you're good to go. So you do kind of have to manage your sprint a little bit, but it's not that bad. As long as you have sprint and you wait to start sprinting until it lets you move, that's the important part. After that, it's just make the little jump onto the wooden platform and then wait for them to start getting closer, then start moving. Then we have a pretty long drop down the elevator, and we're going into the mines, which there's, I would say there's really only one pretty tricky, stressful spot, probably for the rest of the game. At this point, you... You've basically gotten most of the hard parts done. There's a couple of spots that are a little bit stressful, but it's really just two spots that you kind of have to worry about. Everything else is very simple, very straightforward. And even the two kind of tricky spots, I think those are pretty straightforward also, but we'll get to those in a second. So you'll jump out, you'll have to run all the way around. Crouch down to get through this, and very quickly you're going to run over here, jump over this. I don't know if it actually hits you if you take too long, but I never had issues with it. It's pretty easy to go through that. You're going to turn to the right, run all the way down the hall. Now down here, you're going to keep running and then turn to the right, just a, a second in. He's not going to do anything, just run to the end, then turn to the right again. Go all the way down to this end of the tunnel. Crouch down to get under here. And then you'll keep on running straight and over to the left. You're going to have this little entrance. Make sure you come over to the actual ladder portion so that you don't just drop down and die. And then once we get down here, we're going to run straight. He's going to run at you, but it, it's he's not real, so it doesn't matter. Then turn to the right, run straight down here, and go to the left. You'll crawl down through this, 
basically just keep crawling straight until you hear yourself stop crawling. And then once you hear that you are no longer crawling, you're going to hit the button to stand up and then just start jumping and kind of move over to the left. And then eventually you'll, you'll grab onto that ledge. At this point, we'll jump over here and unlock this door. And careful, you're going to crouch, kind of peek out. He's going to drop down. We're just going to stand there and watch him. So this guy is going to go over to the left and go through another locked door. As soon as he does that, you can go ahead and just start walking up. I kind of take my time to make sure that he goes, but then you can just sprint through here. We'll come all the way up here, and then you're going to want to take your camera out and face back the way you came and do the thing where you can look behind you and then slowly walk back until he turns his head and then sprint all the way down. Use your night vision if you have to to make sure you don't get stuck because he is chasing you. As soon as you get past this little light, you're going to go through this door that the guy just came through, go to the left, and get through the little squeeze gap. The guy might hit you on your way up here, but if he doesn't, then you're good. If he does, just heal yourself when you get in the little squeeze gap, and then you can slowly make your way back over here. Make sure you have stamina at this point. And then once you have stamina, we can go back out the door. And he's going to be sitting right here over to our left. You're going to want to make sure he starts chasing you, then run back down where we dropped from originally. You're going to run all the way in here. Sometimes he'll chase you. This time he didn't. If he does chase you, just run around, jump over the gap right there, and then go all the way down the hall where we originally had him chase us from. But otherwise... Just wait a second, he'll go through that door, and then we can run all the way down here. And then once you get down here to the little minecart area, you're going to let that come down. You're going to pull it all the way back. Flip the lever. And then you can push the cards over on the right track. And then you can come over to the left side, crawl under here, and run down the train tracks for a little bit. Right here, you're going to see that guy close the door. It doesn't matter. We're going to go over to the right and crawl under here. And this thing, you basically just go straight for a little while. You'll hear some rocks crumble. And eventually you'll start seeing a little bit of light. Just keep on crawling straight, and eventually you'll get there. So you'll come out right here where there is light. And then we're going to turn to the right and run all the way down this really long set of stairs. And then you'll go through this door. We'll have a little statue thing right here. Run to the left and over to the left again. In here, it's really dark, so you might get turned around. If you do, you'll see that it's right there. But you basically just run through, kind of zigzag your way on this left side, and eventually you'll see this cave opening. You just want to crouch down, get around through here. Eventually you'll slide down. And then we are captured by the Mudmen. And we are confronted by Val. And they'll do their... uh their creepy, true face, burn the mother, whatever. And eventually, we luckily have some rocks kill them, other than Val. And Val's going to chase us, but we just run straight towards this light that we're facing. Right down here. To the right. And kind of flash your, uh, flash your night vision so that you can see the 
tunnel on the left right before the fence. Then you can turn down there, then turn to the right. And while you're running this way, um, whenever the cave in happens, just kind of move to the left and then forward. And you'll go through this little squeeze gap and you can go right through here. Then you'll take a left. This is the other sort of tricky part. Um, you're going to want to flash your night vision on and off. Once you start getting to where you can kind of see lights, you can get away with not using it for a little bit. You'll go straight through this way. And then right here, you're going to flash it a few times. You're going to want to come all the way back and in this little gap that I just crawled through. And then turn to the left, you'll see a light down here. This is where Val's going to come through. So once she starts coming, you're going to get, you're going to want to crouch down into the water and just move backwards. As soon as she goes behind that wall, you can kind of turn around and flip this power switch off and then turn back around towards that light that she came from. You're going to want to sprint all the way down there and then crouch down and look straight up at the light. That way you don't hit your head on it and we can keep it open and still working. I accidentally hit it because I suck. But uh, then you'll just run straight to the right. On the other side of that wooden wall, you can hit the other power switch. Then go back through the tunnel that we just came through. Usually you'll have the, the, uh, the light there still open. But uh, I kind of messed that up. Then what you want to do is just kind of like walk around this little wooden panel so that she can't see you. And then once she's on the other side... Then you can turn over here to where the wires are going outside and go through this tunnel and jump over to this wooden thing. You'll slide over and you can go through this tunnel. And that is the sort of underwater Val section. Once you get through here, you're going to want run over to the left, push this cart out of the way. And then run up here to the lever and just kind of sit here for a little bit. Eventually the cart's going to come back down and once it goes past the lever, then you can hit it. That way it switches the track over to the left. Wait for it to go back up and then we're going to grab it and pull it all the way back. And once you get up here to the little railing part where it's kind of kind of levels out, then you can go back forward and push it, let it go. It'll break through this little tunnel area. It don't worry about Monster Man. He's not going to do anything. Run through there, run to the left, then run to the right. We've got this little section here. You're going to go down this ladder. And eventually it's going to break. You're going to fall down into a very dark little area. You might have to use your night vision for a second down here to kind of figure out where you're supposed to be going, but you jump over the bridge, or the uh, little gate there, go to the right, and then right here you're going to sprint down to the end and crawl through this hole. Now, this little tunnel is not like the others. Instead of just holding W and going straight through, and it kind of routing you through there, you have to make sure that you are flashing your light on and off, and steer your person all the way through here, or you'll get stuck and get caught. So make sure you are just constantly flashing on and off, making sure you can get through here. Once you get to the split area, you're going to go to the right. You'll crouch and get a little extra speed, and then you'll go to crawling mode again. I got stuck for a second there, but it was fine. Then you'll go to the right again once you open back up and you can sprint. Then down here, you'll take another right. Go across these little boards, and you will fall back down. Now down here, you kind of just want to turn until you see a light, and the light's where we're going. Just flash on your night vision on and off to make sure you don't run into any of the little rock formations, or eventually the mud men start dropping down. You'll want to also, also make sure that you keep a good amount of distance between you and them. But uh, it's really similar to the water section, that basically the exact same thing as with the, uh, the really big inmate 
from Outlast 1. It's basically the same thing, but there's multiple enemies. And they, I guess they are also slowly chasing you, but yeah, it's super, super simple, super easy on that one. Then you just crawl up the ladder. You'll go through this dark left hole area. Might have to flash on your night vision to see where you're going. But eventually you get to this spot. Once you get here, you can just kind of use the light from above to see where these ladders are. And just climb up these. Then at this point, you're going to want to be careful when you get on this beam. And then go straight across the beam. Because you do not want to fall off once you get to this point. Then you'll just jump up here. And jump up again. And then keep on going straight over this beam. Again, be careful not to fall off because that would very much suck. Then you'll go straight through and around this little area right up here. And you'll kind of navigate your way through this little cave area and down here where, again, the mud men will capture you. And this is a little interesting. I'm not really going to show it because it's, uh, they got a, they got a little party going on down here that we can't really show on YouTube, so I'm going to try not to do that. But eventually, after that, you end up going back to another flashback to the school. More cutscene. This is another really long cutscene, but unfortunately you have to hold W through uh, at least half of it. So I'll kind of fast forward through it. You're just walking with Jessica. And it kind of uh, does the big reveal of kind of what all went down back here in the school. Good old Catholic school where all kinds of fucked up shit happens. So we'll go through all this, the uh, creepy monster priest guy that we've been running from for all of these uh, school sections. So once we get out here and we're out the door and we actually have control, we're going to go all the way down on the left to the end of this hallway. And you have to literally slowly run all the way to the, uh, the big glass doors. Once you are finally here, then you're going to hear Jessica scream. And then you can turn around and go all the way back down. And we only have really one other section that's kind of easy for you to get caught. There's two, there's two more sections where we have chases, but really only one that you'll have to worry about. The other one is super, super easy to get through. But we'll come down here through this little left door. And then we're about to get into the extra, or the, the next chase. The last time you actually need your night vision. So once we are back here, we've got the cult killing the heretics. We're going to turn right around and use our night vision to navigate through this tunnel. You're going to right here. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck right there, but you're going to keep on running right here where you have a choice to go left or right. You're going to go left, drop down here, then keep on running straight. Again, kind of hang to the left. Hang to the left some more. And go all the way down here. Across this bridge. And through this area. And at this point it's just a long, long staircase that you're going up. Not really, I guess not that long, but you go up the staircase for a little while until you get to this door. 
And then at this point, we've got back to Jessica. And really, so at this point, we don't need night vision anymore. We only have one other chase, and it's during the day. And I mean, at this point, this is the home stretch. You've basically already gotten the achievement at this point, or all of these achievements, I guess, at this point. So we'll run forward with her. I kind of go over to the left, but you need to go way off to the right. So over here, way off to the right, is the way that you have to go at first. Then you kind of route around to the left. And at this point, we're just kind of going towards the burning sun that's in front of us. This part takes a little bit to go through. Eventually, right here, you'll take the left route and go up to this little building. She's going to ask you to help her down. And, uh, well, you'll see. So she'll ask you to help her down. You'll, uh, you'll try to, but then... Lightning happens, you drop her. Oh well. Then you'll have to climb down there, pick her back up, and take her over to this bed that's right in front of you, because she is going into labor. So you'll set her down on the bed, and then get ready because we're about to have our last chase of the game. Right whenever. Good old Martha decides to bust through that door. So then you're going to take Lynn. You're going to run over here to the right, straight down to the end of the room, take a left, and then take another left. Go back to where Martha was walking down, take a right, take another right to go up the stairs. Then you'll turn to the right, all the way back around here, loop around the left, go straight, Go to the left some more. Go to the left some more. I actually went to the right, and uh, it's super hard to turn, so you don't want to do that. But you'll go to the left, and then come over to the right, and she'll bust through the wall right in front of you, and you'll go into cutscene mode. And it looks like everything's about to be over until a little bit of karma comes. So the roof's going to get blown off. Then the uh, cross that's at the top of the the church up there, it's going to get hit by lightning and it's going to fly straight down and kill Martha. And that is the last time during the game that you're going to get chased and even have a chance of dying. So at this point, you, you're good to go. You just have to go forward, walk Lynn up to the little church area, and kind of just go through the ending cutscenes of the game and the achievement will be yours. I'd say the Messiah achievement is probably... It is probably the hardest one that I've done. Because I can't... All the other random speedrun achievements, I've been able to do like first or second try. This one, it was like eight or nine tries. This one actually took a little while to get done. Because... Even doing, like, the actual speedrun for it, it's almost, it's, it's almost two and a half hours. So it definitely takes a very long time. And they definitely upped the difficulty for this one. I guess they didn't like that people were able to just kind of see in the dark with the first one. So they said, no, there will be no more of that. Which, I mean, you still could, for the most part. Or at least with my monitor, I could, I could see pretty well. So hopefully you guys can too. I guess if you have a, a darker monitor or something, it might be a little bit more difficult, but a lot of those dark sections, I could still like faintly see the outline of where to go. That made doing it with only one battery of night vision not too difficult. But yeah, you'll run all the way up here, you turn to the right there, 
you can see how hard it is to turn with Lynn. And then we're in the church. We go through our little cutscenes here. I'm going to, uh, I'll probably throw up some sensor bars or some shit <laughs> just to, uh, help not get demonetized. Because you guys know just how picky YouTube can be. So we're gonna, we're gonna censor that a little bit. You guys will, uh, you guys know what, it's already going down. You guys have played this game, if you were doing this achievement. But yeah, we just have to go through this cutscene, the little section with the preacher, priest guy, Noth. And then basically just walk out and the game ends. I think we have maybe... I guess maybe like a little bit less than 10 minutes left. But it, it's pretty much almost all just exposition at this point. And then, cool thing, if, uh, if you don't already know kind of what the whole story is right now, if you look at the shadow, and she just said there's nothing there, if you look at the shadow underneath him, there is no baby that he's holding. It's literally just him going crazy because of the uh, experiments that are being done around the town. So he's just hallucinating just like all the cultists are. So he's seeing this baby from her phantom pregnancy, but she actually did not have a baby. And if you look at the shadow, he's not holding anything. Of course, now we've got another little scene with Jessica. We have to sit through this, then we have the preacher, then we have another scene with Jessica. Going through this one definitely has me excited more for uh, the Outlast Trials. Definitely ready for that one to come out. Probably going to be doing that one kind of, I guess, immediately once it comes out. I doubt that I'll be able to do any of it uh, kind of early or anything, but as soon as it releases, I'll probably start going through it, try to get those videos out within a week or two. Yeah, this guy, the baby's too powerful. He can't do it. He needs us to. Because if we don't kill the baby, the end times are here, the world's gonna end. And so, since he can't do it, he's just gonna end up killing himself here. And unfortunately, because the audio cut out, the, uh, I guess basically like the second half of the game, it's, uh, it's gonna be very quiet. I'll probably have some background music going during the quiet portions whenever I'm not talking, when there's random cutscenes or just these long, empty sections. I'll probably do something like that. We'll see. Either that or I'll maybe take some of the audio from the cutscenes and kind of like splice it in. That'll be a little bit of work, but I had to do other playthroughs already, so I've got the footage. Could do that. 
we'll see. You'll you'll see how it is once you're watching it, but at this point, we are just walking straight down through the town, seeing the aftermath of everyone taking Noth's word and killing themselves because we are at the end times, even though it's all just in our heads because we've been out and exposed to the uh, the flashes of light that the experiments have been doing. We'll go right around here, the uh, giant piles of dead bodies. Go all the way up here to this little, uh, where this chair is. Look at the light, and boom. Feels like the world ends. We go back to the school. We just have to run, go find Jessica. I think I actually get slightly lost in this. Yeah, because I think you run to the left right there. Yeah, you run to the left through that open open room. I actually ran past it, though. So you go through this room. It was on our left. And then just kind of turn to the right, go through here, through the little kitchen area, and into the back room, like meat freezer. And that's where Jessica is. She's going to take us back there, pray with us. And that will be the end of the game. That will be... Messiah, Saint, blah blah blah, all of those achievements that we listed at the beginning ended up being six different achievements that you can get by doing this one run. We'll see them pop up in a second. But the game will fade to black. And boom. So yeah, we'll get all of these six achievements because I didn't do a uh, nightmare or hard mode already. So we got those two. But boom, there is that Messiah speedrun. Doing insane mode, one battery under four hours, all of that good stuff.